uh, I hope you guys are able to see my screen. Yeah. Can you hear me well? Okay, great. Thank you. So let's get started quickly. Uh, application security group, which we discussed, I'll quickly show it to you. So if we go to portal, and if I look for, I can type application security group, or I can type ASG to get that service. This is how it looks. Application security group. I can create any ASG. I think uh, Usher has already created one here in this one, right? I think he just created right now. So let me use the same one. So uh, for example, now I have this ASG here. I can assign this ASG to any of the network, uh, to any of the NIC. I can associate this with any of the NIC. Okay. Once I do that, uh, this is called just ASG. Let me just create one more. For example, let's say that I'm creating an ASG. Uh, no RDP AC. Okay. I'm creating it in East US. That's all. See that there's nothing in this uh, AC. No configuration, nothing. You just have to create one ASG. And then you start assigning this ASG to some machines. Now I do not have a machine in this subscription, so I won't be able to attach it to a machine. But if you had a machine, I, I, I will be able to attach that to any of the machines, right? To the NIC level, I can do that. Let me, then after this, let me open I, this one, application uh, NAC first. This is created, okay? You can assign it to any of the machines at the NIC level, you'll have to go to machine and you'll have to go to networking settings under networking, you'll have to look for uh, your NIC. I hope you guys are aware of this, right? We, we have seen all of this, how to go to NIC, how to uh, check which NIC is assigned where. Do you guys remember this? Yes. Right. And there you can assign or you can detach any application security group to the NIC level. Once that is done, you simply have to go to your NSG. Now I'm not sure if there is any NSG here. Okay, here one is one NSG is here. Uh, and simultaneously we'll check this work also. Uh, fine, good work here. Uh, gap of ten numbers. Though I, I whoever did not uh, keep this gap of ten. I understand that because I did not explain it earlier, but normally in a production environment or live environment, wherever you see, you will see uh, the difference of 10 numbers between these priorities. So there is no technical binding. You can have 100 and 101. It's feasible, but it's normally you can keep uh, 10 difference of 10. Okay, now let's say that I, instead of this, if I would have said, I do not want RDP, no RDP, on some machines, some certain machines. So how I would have done, I would have created first one ASG, the one which I created, no uh, no RDP ASG. I will assign that ASG to all the machines wherever I want this setting. And that I can easily do using one script. I can attach it to multiple machines. You don't have to do that manually. Once it is attached to your multiple machines, then you'll come here to your security group, to your network security group, create a rule. What did I say? I do not want RDP. It's RDP allowed here by, by the way, by default is RDP allowed here in this NSG, the one which we are looking at. No. No. But what is my requirement no. that it, RDP should be allowed, right? It's RDP should be allowed to all of the machines except for those machines where I want, uh, for those 50 machines. So first thing I'm going to do is us allow rdp so from where is it coming from anywhere it's okay source port it's it's okay i mean i can put 3389 this is my source port uh and what do i want i want rdp for whom i want rdp here uh, for all machines as of now i'm doing it for all the machines right now my priority is i'm keeping my priority here it's 300 what does it say? Allow, allow RDP. The moment I do this, what have I done here? I have allowed RDP to this network security group. And this network security group applies to whichever subnet, all the machines under that subnet will have uh, RDP allowed. 
Is it clear till here, guys? Yes. Yes. Now, the next requirement is that few machines out of that, 50 machines out of them, should not have RDB. So, source anywhere it is coming from, I am okay. Source port, again, it's 3389. Destination. Here, this is the place where I use my application security group. Now, look at this. If I would have selected any, and I, if I would have denied this, it would have denied for all of them, for all of them. Okay. But instead of any, what will I do now? I will select application security group. And here I'll find my application security group. No RDP AZ. So now this one will applicable only for those machines in this subnet who has this application security group attached to their NIC. And then rest of the thing are same. Instead of allow, I'm doing deny. Is everything correct in this one? Or what do you think? Uh, do I have to change something? Or if I just add this, is it going to work? Is my rule working here? Or did I do something wrong here? Look at these rules properly and let me know. Will the deny work here or it won't work? No, the deny rule won't work because the priority is... will not going to work only. Why, why won't it work, Nirmal? Uh, because you have uh, you have not allowed it, you have denied it. So even uh, if I'm trying to connect to RBT, uh, sorry, RDP, it will be not going to allow me uh, because of the set uh, uh, no, no, priority. My, my question is, is this deny rule is going to work? Will I be able to take RDP or will I not no. be able to take RDP? Is no. this because priority the priority number, number should be lesser than 300. Yes, RDP, it's going to work normally. What you're saying is RDP is not going to work? No, RDP is going mm -hmm. to work. It, it is going to work definitely. Why? Because I have two rules for that. However, my first rule says it is allowed for all. Look at this. I said any. And this one has a lesser priority. So if I want this rule to take uh, precedent over this one, what I'll have to do is I would have selected or I should select a lesser number than this. Mm -hmm. 20, right? It could be anything, right? Anything okay. lesser than 300. 300, okay. It could be 150, it could be 290, it could be 299. Anything, it's okay. But the best practice is to give a gap of 10. But it could be anything. Now look at this. Now I have two rules. One which says deny RDP. It is fine. But now there is no conflict in this actually. Why? Because I'm denying RDP. Uh, first, let's see if I can keep... Uh, yeah. Here I'm denying RDP only for which machine? Only for those machines where I have attached this application security group, which says no RDP ASG. Okay, so by default, this is going to work for other machines. Is it clear, guys? Though it has lower priority, but it is not impacting other machines. On the other hand, if, if I keep it more than 300, this rule is impacting. Why? Because here I have said anything and everything. Even these machines will come in, under this category. Are you guys getting it? Yeah. Okay. Any questions? Any doubt in this one? Um, why we have kept uh, the port number 8080? Uh, we should change it uh, to 3389, I guess. This one? Yes, definitely 3389. Yes. Definitely 3389. I mean, this is just an example. Obviously, whatever port yeah. number we are talking about, 3389, and here also it's 3389. Yes, that's a good, good observation. So both 3389, 3389, at one place I'm allowing all of them. So traffic is coming, but in immediately the next rule says that it is not allowed, but not allowed for whom? Only for those machines where this application security group is attached. So is there any doubt, any, any questions on this case? If not, we can proceed and we can start Hub and Spoke Network. Uh, still, if you guys have any doubts, please do ask. We have seen how to create an ASG. We have seen how to uh, create a rule using ASG. The only thing which, we, which is missing is how to attach an application group to a NIC, which is very simple and easy task. Uh, 
I would say you guys go ahead and do it and let me know. Maybe send a screenshot or something that how did you do it? And if you guys don't find it, I'll explain it. It's very, very simple. I just don't have a machine here. Otherwise, I would have shown it to you. And creating a machine will take enough uh, time. Okay, fine. I have another machine in another resource group. Got it. Not in the resource group. This is a different subscription here. But here I have a machine. So let me quickly show it to you. A machine here. This one. Let's see if we have any application security group here. Let's say we don't have. Let me create one. Let's imagine that uh, both are in same... Uh, Test is here. Yeah, I'm creating just create it and I'll have to create it where where the machine my existing machine is there if I want to use this on my existing machine I'll have to make sure that I'm using the same region otherwise I won't be able to see this AC over there so once it is created I'll just show it to you how to at attach it to any machine on which component do we at attach it on machine Nick. Nick, yes. So let's say while it is being created, I'll go to a machine. You guys can guide me. Where can I go to find Nick? And where do you see an option to select AC? So let's say this is my machine. On this machine, I want to attach. So where should I go? Let the page appear and then you can guide me. Yes. I want to attach an AC. Can you guys guide me? Network settings. Network settings. Yes. Network interface. Do you want me to click on this, Nick? No, below that. On this Network one? Interface. Okay. Now. Please uh, click uh, back again, Sohail. Go back. Uh, yeah, please go back. Okay. One click. Yeah. Uh, you're able to see attached network interface, detached network interface. Yes. So over there, I have to attach network interface. Uh, please click on that. Okay. But what am I doing here? Am I attaching an application security group or am I attaching a network? Am I attaching a NIC here? What is my requirement? Do I do I want to attach a NIC or do I want to attach an application security group to a NIC? What options you what option you are referring to? It is a, giving me an option. It is enabling me to attach a NIC. That is not my requirement. I don't want another NIC. One machine can have multiple NICs. I have told you guys. That is not There's my option. Well, wait, there is an option. Option of security group. group, right? Yes. Uh, below load balancers. Here it is, guys. Under load yeah. balancer here, application security groups. So I just simply click on this. And I can add from here, add application security group. If there are any existing group, I will see them. Can you see? I've created test ASG. Simply attach that. And that's all. And now if I create any rule in NSG where I uh, select target as test ASG, so all those will apply to these machines, wherever I at attach this. Is it clear, guys? So now we have seen how to create ASG, we have seen how to attach ASG, and we have seen how to create a rule using ASG. All clear. Okay, so now let's go ahead and uh, start with our hub and spoke model. Okay. Hub and spoke, as I told you, we are not spending much time on this. Uh, hub and spoke is nothing but uh, our uh, VNet peering and UDR route table, okay? combination of that. So we are not doing the practical, but I will explain it to you that how to explain it in interview. This is a very important and very impactful question. Even if they don't ask, say it proactively. When they say, what do you do uh, on day-to-day -day basis? What are your jobs? Or can you tell me uh, one of your uh, recently used surveys or, or any service which where you saved some money, where you did some good job? Any, any question, any opportunity where you get, grab it and explain hub and spoke model. 
okay explain that and it will be a good impression it will help you to clear the interview whether it is with client after clearing your actual interview or with it, whether it is with the uh, company directly so let me explain hub and spoke to you first thing hub and spoke model what it is when do we use it first let me read this uh, these definitions for you and then i'll explain it to you in layman term many points from here we don't uh, grab i mean we leave many points from here so i'll tell you a virtual hub is a microsoft managed virtual network that enables connectivity from other resources when a virtual hub is created when a virtual hub is created from a virtual vlan or virtual van in azure portal a virtual hub vnet and a gateway optional it's created its components so if, if you go by this i'm sure you won't understand anything you you, you are free to read this if you want uh but i uh, highly doubt that you will understand this in anything from this definition. So let me explain it to you. Okay, let me open one design. I have shared it last time also. So hub and spoke one. Here it is. It is loading. Right. Why would we use hub and spoke? That is the first thing which comes to the mind. So there are two scenarios, two or three. I can explain it to you. Use any one. Uh, the second one, it's uh, it's a good one. Good gives a good impact. So let's see first that why would we need? When I'm working in Azure, I may have multiple virtual networks, right? I may have multiple virtual networks. Now, uh, when I have multiple virtual networks, I have mul multiple machines there. Now I have some requirement where I want to connect all of my Azure network, all the virtual networks, everything to my on-prem data center. How do we do that, by the way? Can someone tell me which service do we use to connect my Azure network to my on-prem on -prem data center? How do we do that? VPN. 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 Oh, Where VPN. do we apply VPN? VNet. VNet. VNet level, right? Correct. Till here, you guys are correct. So this is my on-prem data center. This is my uh, these are my VNets and I want connectivity for, with all of them. So what will I have to do here is I'll have to connect VPN with this VNet, then from this VNet, from this VNet, and from this VNet, and from this VNet. So I'll have to have five VPN connectivity, five VPN gateways, everything five, because I have five virtual networks and these are only five. What if I had 50? Right? So I would have, I, I, I should be making 50 connections, which doesn't make any sense. It's not feasible option. So to avoid that or to achieve connectivity here, what do we do? We select one network, one virtual network. On that virtual network, we make a connectivity. We create a connectivity between our on-prem network and Azure virtual network, only on one. Got it? So once the connectivity is established, now we have some sort of connectivity between our on-prem and Azure. Even if it is one virtual network, that is fine. But there is some connectivity. So once we achieve this, what can we do? Now we can connect all the VNets, all the virtual networks from this VNet to this VNet, from this VNet to this VNet, and from this VNet to this VNet. Like shown in the picture, let's say this is on-prem. From on-prem to this one, I have connected. And from here, I'm connecting to this VNet, from this VNet to this VNet from this VNet to this VNet, and from this VNet to this VNet. This is how I can achieve the connectivity between our, our on-prem and all the virtual networks without having all different VPN gateways, right? Now, once I've connected this, I want to make sure that the, the traffic, because now from this virtual network, if I try to access a machine here, there's, there's a machine here and there's a machine here, a database. And if I'm trying to connect from here to here, will it get connected, guys? If this is how I try to connect, will it get connected? Will I have the access? Yes, guys. Yes, no. Maybe what do you understand? Directly is not possible. Uh, we can go through VPN. Yes. So how would you make sure that this traffic doesn't go directly over the internet, but goes like this, that from here to here, 
and from here through VPN gateway. This is how it flows. How would you make sure that? Uh, for v VNet to VNet, uh, we can route. and then uh, with the help route of tables. VPN. Yes, guys. VNet to VNet pairing, it's okay. I mean, you have done the pairing in this VNet and this VNet. But just because you do the pairing, does it decide the route or does it just make the connectivity? We have the done the pairing, right? Pairing doesn't decide your doubts, uh, routes. Yes. So yes, you'll have to do the pairing to, to have the connection and then you'll have to use your route tables, your UDR, to make sure that all the data from here, it flows to this VNet and then once it is in this VNet, it, it is automatically going out this VPN gateway, using this VPN gateway. So the so combination of VNet pairing and your UDR or route table, it is called your hub and spoke model, where one virtual network will act as a hub and the remaining virtual networks will be spoke virtual network. These all are spoke virtual networks. Got it? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Now one question, if I do this uh, connectivity, this kind of connectivity, this kind of setup, then can these two VNets talk to each other? Are they talking to each other? By the way, that is not my requirement, but just because I have done the VNet pairing, are they talking to each other? They should be. Okay. Think about it, guys. Just give me one minute. I'm uh, switching my... Uh, Internet, maybe we, we may have a lag of one minute. I'm switching my Wi-Fi connection. Meanwhile, think about it. You have the diagram in front of you and you have my question. Can you guys still hear me? See my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. My connection has been switched. Right, so my question here was, can these VNets talk to each other by default? I'm not doing anything. What I have done is just hub model. I've connected spokes to hub. And this is not my requirement. If they are talking to each other, then I'll have to do something about it. But before that, my question is, are they talking to each other? They are in same location. If they are in same location, they can talk to each other. Okay, anyone else? By default, then connected but did not talk. Yes, first two answers were incorrect. Whoever answered, they can talk, they should talk to each other. Incorrect. They are in the same location, then they can they should talk to each other. Incorrect. Irrespective of the uh, uh, location, we have seen if it is different location, we call it global VNet pairing. If it is uh, same location, we call it local VNet pairing. Right. So location doesn't matter here. So irrespective of their location, they should not be talking to each other. They cannot talk to each other by default. Unless I'm pairing them with each other, that is a different thing. But what have I done here? I have just connected hub to spoke. Spoke 1, spoke 2, spoke 3, and spoke 4. And why, why are they not talking to each other? What is the reason? How would you explain that? VNet pairing is not done in between them. But I have done VNet pairing in with, with within hub and spoke, right? Hub is connected to spoke VNet one. Spoke are not not allowed. Sorry. Because well, we have disabled not allowed the traffic forwarded from remote virtual network. Okay, I'm still uh, looking because, for one word. Because the uh, need to get. Sorry, what was that? So no, is the routes need to be added? No, this is not my requirement. I don't want them to talk. Why would I add, add route table? And it has nothing to do with route table. Route table doesn't give you a connectivity. Route table gives you option to decide the route. Connectivity should be there. Then only I can decide the route. Route table doesn't give you the connectivity. If these two are not connected with each other in VNet pairing, creating a route table won't help me. Yes, guys. Someone answered that we have not enabled the IP forwarded. It's okay. I, I got that answer. But I'm still looking for one property. When you start explaining VNet pairing, what do you say about VNet pairing? Can you explain VNet pairing? 
it is not transit in nature yes. yes that is the word i was looking for and that is the word you should say in your interview guys that i have connected this with this this with this and hub spoke with uh, hub and spoke all of them but they are still not talking to each other because they are not transitive in nature just because these two are connected just because these two are connected and these two are connected that does not mean these two will start speaking to each other these two are not connected unless i do that manually that's a different thing but i told you that is not my requirement so unless i do that manually that is a different thing these are not transitive in nature so they are not able to speak to each, each other and most of the time this is the requirement they don't want these virtual networks to talk to each other these are separate applications separate uh application owners different networks everything is different different department maybe this is legal this is hr or something but yes they have some work they they all have some servers on on prem 100 servers here for legal but they still have 100 servers on on prem hr 100 servers are here on azure but they still have 100 servers on on prem so the both of them they want to talk to uh, on prem but they do not want to talk to each other that is not the requirement getting it guys yes so by default when we use hub and spoke we don't have to do anything for this because these uh, networks they cannot talk to each other and you are not trafficking you are not forwarding your traffic you are not doing this yahan se aap is tarah ki connectivity nahi le rahe look at my diagram it doesn't say that spoke vnet from here to here and this is connected this is not the connection we are taking look at the diagram how have i taken the connection one to one vnet pairing with hub this is connected look at this proper line this is connected directly and this is connected and then this is connected directly getting it guys so i'm not going through or jumping or connecting any other so i don't require ip forwarding and these will not talk to each other my requirement here was to talk to uh, my uh, on prem network that i can achieve once i have this connectivity the only thing which i have to add is my udr user defined route where we were selecting network virtual appliance instead of that i will have to select virtual network and i'll just have to select which virtual network should be the next hop so i'll select virtual network should be the next hop this virtual network should be the next hop so any traffic which is coming from here from this virtual network will default by default will go here because i've selected under my udr user defined route i have selected that this should be the next hop and out of this if any traffic is going so i will have the connectivity to my resources on prem is this clear guys yes so th this is the reason i'm not uh, uh, doing a practical of hub and spoke it's it's nothing it is just combination of your vnet pairing because it it is a resource hungry practical i'll require many uh, virtual networks machines vnet vpn and it's going to take time and then udr etc it, it's going to take time uh, and we have done both of these practicals okay so i'm explaining the business case to you make sure you use this in your interview so this could be one business case why would you required hub and spoke model right and the another one could be firewall firewall is a resource i am sure all of you know by now what is a firewall like we use in operating system firewall which allows some connection which uh, uh which deny some connections so similarly we have a firewall in azure also which is called azure firewall it is on the portal level not talking about the os level and you may hear a question also what is the difference between nsg and firewall because at nsg level also we are blocking something right we are blocking rdp connection we can block something but at nsg level we have very limited options and that get applied to my subnet however the firewall that get gets applied to vnet level it has very granular control i mean i can have very detailed control that any traffic which is coming from some country that should not be allowed under nsg i don't have this granular control nsg it's very a simple version a, a, a smaller version of firewall that get gets applied to subnet firewall gets applied to vnet so firewall will have a granular control a detailed control 
that if I want traffic from so, so and so uh, country, I can allow. Let's say that I have seen based on some networks, based on based on some reports, I have observed that traffic coming from Nigeria, they are mostly hacker. And my my company, I do not even have any client or any vendor or any work in Nigeria. So I want to block all the traffic from Nigeria. This kind of granular level access we will have on firewall. We will see that when we see firewall, if we cover. Otherwise, we are not going to cover. It's not uh, frequently asked. It's very important, but not frequently asked. But you should have an idea. And here I already have that answer that what is the difference between firewall and LAC. So this is what a firewall is. But the thing is that firewall gets applied on a virtual network at VNet level, and it is one of the costliest resources. NAC is free, almost free. But your firewall, it is one of the costliest resources. So the next business case, which you can explain for Hub and Spoke is that our client wanted firewall level of security for all of his virtual networks. He had 10 virtual networks, 10 applications. He wanted 10 firewalls. He was ready to pay. However, our architect team explained or suggested a diagram to them or a, dis or, or, or a solution to them that we can have only one firewall at the hub level. And we can, uh, using UDR and route table, we can route all our traffic through that hub network using hub and spoke model. So incoming traffic and outgoing traffic, both will be from here. So you, doing this, by doing this, what will happen? Ultimately, you will end up paying only for one firewall and you are using, you are leveraging the benefits of firewall for all of your virtual networks because all your traffic is going from firewall. It is coming for firewall. It is going through firewall. It is coming through firewall. So there are two scenarios which we discussed. One is connectivity with on-prem. The next one is firewall. I would say use firewall because it, it gives a good impression that you have used firewall also. You know about hub and spoke. You saved money. You know how to configure. You spoke about UDI. You spoke about route table. So it becomes a good recipe, a good answer to clear your interview. Now, the outgoing traffic, you have uh, defined it using UDR. Traffic it's it should go from this network. You have defined that on UDR. But someone who's accessing a virtual machine here, how would that person know that that traffic should come from here? Why can't he directly come from here? Right? A person who's accessing your uh, website or your machine, how will that person know? So that you can configure at firewall level. The moment you put some destination here, you have many options under firewall. You will have destination. So the moment destination is this, your network will know that this request should go from here. So this can be achieved at firewall. Outgoing traffic, you can control it using your UDR. Uh, using the UDR, you make sure that traffic goes from this particular hub network. And there we have firewall. Firewall takes care of everything. I mean, you have to configure firewall, obviously. But it, it, it's being, uh, uh, most of the time, network team or security team, they do that. But we'll see that if time permits, I'll show you one firewall setting also. But, but you should know that all these details can be done using firewall. So two options you can use, two scenarios you can use. One is connectivity with on-prem. That time hub and spoke is useful option. Instead of connecting all virtual networks to your on-prem, use hub and spoke. And the best option is firewall that where you want to use firewall you can use a firewall on one virtual network and declare that virtual network as hub virtual network and use a remaining virtual network as spoke virtual network and as in, when i say declare you don't literally have to go ahead and declare somewhere you just make these connections connect do the peering like this to everyone and make UDR, under UDR mention that the traffic should flow this, and this becomes your hub network, and these are your spoke network. You don't have to do anything. Uh, when While deploying virtual networks, you don't deploy, deploy it differently. As an ke hub virtual network, which Alexa deploy hata hai, hub, hub VNet, Alexa deploy hata hai. No, that is not the case. Spoke VNet, you don't deploy it separately. These all are virtual networks. You just select one virtual network on which you have your firewall, or VPN, or in this case, both. And then you decide routes and you decide your peering. 
and this is how your hub spoke uh, hub and spoke virtual networks are decided you don't do anything differently while deploying the virtual network interviewer may ask you that how do you deploy a hub virtual network so virtual hub virtual network is nothing it's a virtual network how you deploy a normal virtual network that's how you deploy a, no, a hub virtual network later on with settings which you do that makes him or makes it a hub virtual network got it there's no uh, predefined hub virtual network all our virtual network let's say instead of this i would have decided to go with this one i will deploy my firewall here i will do the connectivity here vpn connectivity here then this becomes my hub virtual network i'll can do this kind of connectivity simple getting it guys yes yes so this is our hub and spoke virtual network i'm not doing practical that does not mean this is not important i'm repeating myself very important when you go to networking they might ask they may ask if they don't ask you say it proactively because not many of the candidates will be able to explain hub and spoke uh, model yeah uh, even if they have genuinely working from one to two years or three years you rarely get chance to work on hub and spoke virtual network because this is something which they create at the beginning at the initial level and you don't even get to see this so if they don't ask you say this while deploying uh, we do i i have worked on virtual hub and spoke virtual network once or if they say uh, talk about your recent project what you have done that time you can explain this hub and virtual spoke network hub and spoke virtual network model we have 2 minutes left or 1 minute left actually you guys have any questions let me know if not we'll uh, stop the session uh, we'll have we'll take a break of 5 minutes i'll have to convert this recording and then we'll come back and start with load balancer so do you guys have any questions fine guys if no questions let me stop the session it's uh, 15:22 now we'll re resume in 8 minutes 15:30 using the same link and we'll start load balancer i'm stopping the session now <laughs>